think I'm supposed to talk about networking? Do, who here considers himself a master networker? I think by nature, most of us are kind of like introverts when it comes to networking. I think we have a hard time, and I'm gonna be really open and honest during this presentation. So if I say anything, I'm not here, I don't wanna offend you, but I wanna change your paradigm, right? Um, I think when it comes to, to the future, a lot of us have a hard time planning not only what we wanna do for like the weekend, but further out. And if you took one thing from this presentation, and if you just did one thing from here on out, is I would encourage you to once a week to have lunch with one new person. And if you do that, your life will be completely changed. Do you need to click allow or? Is that gonna stay up there? Okay, so this presentation is called the white knight theory. In many ways, John Richards is my white knight and I hope he never ever watches this. Okay, so you be like, the night white, night white what? We'll come back to that. So here's some of my background. So my background is, I graduated from high school in 2002. I've had a lot of different work experiences. At one point, I thought I wanted to do politics or law, so I worked for the United States Judiciary Committee in DC. I ran a project for Josh James. He sold Amateur, he's now running Domo, called Silicon Slopes. That was like a news publishing entity for tech in Utah. I teach a class at BYU. I started Boom Startup with John Richards. I assume you guys know what Boom Startup is. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't know if you guys are awake or asleep. Um, I've done a lot of different things. Where related was when, fa when Facebook apps first came out, we had an app that was the fourth most popular app out of all of the apps in the world. Most of my background is in internet technology and I'm very biased. I believe if you're not doing something in software, you're, you're wasting your time. I'll get into that a little bit. Right now, I've got a company called Tiny Torch. Um, basically, the concept of Tiny Torch is if like, you're a dentist in New York, and you're a dentist in LA, each of you right now are creating your, your own social media campaigns, or if, if you even are, and to do that, you're spending about 1,200 to two grand a month to hire, to hire a designer, to find content, that's an additional person that you have to manage, and Tiny Torch is designed to make social media so easy that an intern can run it. So the basic concept is if I'm like a dentist in New York or I'm a dentist in LA, why not share the same content? I can, incre I can pull our marketing resources together to create higher quality content while decreasing our costs. So right now Tiny Torch has about 590,000 pieces of content that the users have uploaded in the last six or seven months. We've completely created a new platform because we were growing so fast, and so that's kind of Tiny Torch. It's a crowdsourced marketing platform. That's not why I'm here. I'm supposed to talk about mar uh, networking. And so first of all, let's talk about career decisions. So I'm a big believer that all of the decisions or assumptions you've made about the career that you want in your life are wrong. I'm gonna let that sink in. You guys can throw stuff at me right now. You're like, you're an idiot. I hate you, John Bradshaw. You're dumb. All right, so first thing, let's take an example. You want to be a biologist. I assume, do you guys, are you guys like entrepreneurship focused or business focused? It's a mix. Business, so I believe you should do entrepreneurship. If you're not, you're messing up. But <laughs> let's just take an example. You want to be a biologist, right? My, from teaching at BYU, what I found is that most people, when they get to this, th this space, the reason they want to be a biologist is because they enjoy biology class, is being a biologist and studying biology the same thing. But they're making a hypothesis or an educated guess that how you're gonna spend the next 10 years of your life are based upon, you know, maybe this was you enjoyed your biology teacher in high school and because of your biology teacher, you're now making this assumption. Do you see how there's like, that it doesn't lead to causation? enjoying hanging out with your biology professor in high school is not the same as enjoying biology class. And so part of networking is you need to get outside of your comfort zone, right? So another example, you wanna be an entrepreneur. I've had a lot of friends that graduated from BYU with me that were not cut out to be entrepreneurs. And the reason they wanted to be an entrepreneur is they enjoyed talking about startups. They enjoyed talking about the future, but is talking about startups and doing a startup the same thing? Do you see, get where I'm going with this. Okay, let's go make it more personal to me. 
When I was younger, I wanted to be a doctor. I thought with all my heart, I said, there's, there's, this is the perfect decision for me. But I came to this conclusion because my doctor was a friend. What happened was, I had a Dr. McLean, and I loved going to the doctor. And you'd be the guy that you would hate going to the doctor behind me because when I would go, I would be there for like 30 minutes. And we would like talk back and forth and we'd say things like, he's like, he's like, one of my patients, they claim they fell seven for seven seconds from a cliff in Lake Powell and broke their back. And he said, let's go through and do the math equation. And for me, it was fun. For me, going to the doctor was fun. I didn't realize that I was not an average patient. Right, but I made an assumption because I enjoyed going to the doctor's office and hanging out with a friend and a mentor that that was going to be the same as being a doctor. It wasn't until years later when I did an internship for a physical therapist. I used to run track actually here at UVU. And then um, I decided to get an internship for a physical therapist because I'm like, I felt like there'd be, it would be a more real world example. And I realized that I was not the average example and that I had based my entire decision on wanting to be a doctor off of this experience here, when I mean, that's, that's not anything like the real world. Does that make sense? You get where I'm going out, or is it kind of like a weird parallel? Because usually I work late all night, and then I mumble, so it doesn't make sense. Like another example, so after that, like every other BYU student, I want, my next thing is I want to be an attorney, right? And why did I want to be an attorney? because I had actual in the office experience with like working as an attorney, when it was really, I envy their lifestyle. Like, do you get where I'm going? Most of you guys are making decisions right now about wanting to be in business, right? Maybe you wanna be a marketer, right? But how much time have you actually spent marketing? Like, do you enjoy staring at a screen and watching that? Like with our entrepreneurship, right? All my friends want to be entrepreneurs. I can't find one person who wants to do that, doesn't want to do that, but if, if they're the people who are willing to pay the cost, like I haven't taken a paycheck for about two years now because I believe in a vision, I put all my savings in, and most people aren't willing to do that. Like it's hard just to get people on my team to say, I want you to take our 10 or 20% cut and we're gonna give you equity and it's gonna be worth something. They're like, well, I've got a house and I, I've got kids and I don't know how I can live for less than $10,000 a month. I'm like, how, what? Like, I live for $1,000 a month. And half of that's spent on credit card bills. So that's just kind of an example. Like, so what do you, like, let's take a moment and think about your own self. You wanna be a what? Like, let's write this down real fast. Most of you guys have paper and pencil. I assume there's not that many computers here. And this is like a good exercise. Do you guys all know what this answer is right now? And then let's take a moment and then say, why? Why do you want to get there? Or what was your hypo like, what's the root of your hypothesis? Like if you say, I want to be an attorney because I've actually interned as at, in a legal office and I, I think that's fun or I've spent time in the courtroom because I, I was a juvie and I think it would be fun to help out, like that's more real world experience, right? But most of us are making decisions right now with zero actual relatable data. Am I boring you yet? He's yawning here. He's like, this guy sucks. Can you guys hear me in the back? Am I like mic to the whole thing or do I just have to speak loud? I'm only mic to the camera, right? Like, so why, like, all right, take a moment and share it with your, your buddy or your friend. Like, what if, like, like, are your assumptions correct? Tripping. I'm glad I made it here. I was like 90, 90, 95 the whole way down from Salt Lake. It's like, I'll be there in, ten, I'm in like 10 minutes late. I'm like, no, it's gonna be like 20, but I don't wanna tell Sarah that. Wait, that probably just got picked up by my mic. Nice.
I mean, is it going to be published live or where, what happens to it? No one, pro no one probably ever watches it, is my guess. They probably just film it for like posterity's sake. I never did my homework, and if that's part of homework, they're like, or they skim through it real fast. What do the PowerPoint say? See, this guy totally agrees with me. All right, take 30 seconds to wrap up. I need to borrow someone's like hair gel or something. <laughs> My hair is totally messed up. <laughs> All right, so did you guys, like so far in the 10 minutes I've wasted of your lives, have you learned anything yet? Like, has anyone had like a paradigm shift? You're like shaking your head, the one in pink. What did you learn, or what like, what are you taking away from this? Okay. Yeah. Most people never like when they, like most people when you're making a career decision, like they're just basing off of well, I've got a friend, right? Like, do you see how like you could like have a miserable life for the next ten years by picking a bad profession? off of bad data. And like so this is why networking is important, okay? So let's talk about now that you're, you know, my hope is you had this like epiphany or like I need to like go figure my life out next, right? Like how do I get real world data? Okay? So I'm a big believer that the the keystone to any success is networking. It's not really you know, it's not really what you know, it's who you know. That's all it is. Like, I teach a class at BYU because I knew John Richards. I had two people that hit me up yesterday, John, how do I teach a class at BYU? I'm not the smartest guy. I'm definitely not punctual. <laughs> but I'm there because I knew John Richards. Okay? Skip to that. And I'm also a big believer that, that your diploma that you'll get from UVU is far less valuable than the contacts. I was going to say in your black book, but no one ever has a black book anymore in your phone. It's who, who, who can you call at 2 in the morning and we'll pick up your phone call and it's about maintaining those relationships. Like I'm a firm believer if you spent four years like networking and helping people out and doing good in the world, you'll be far better off than spending four years looking at a book. Like I believe you should get bad grades or drop out of school and go build some real networks and some real relationships. But BYU hates it when I say it to my students. I'm sure UVU hates that too. <laughs> like, it's far more better. I mean, it depends on where you want to go. If you want to go to like a big four accounting firm or something like that, you have to have like the perfect grades. At the end of the day, the person who gets hired there is hired because they know someone there already, someone that can vouch for them. And so spending time here in class listening to me, listening to me doesn't really help you. Okay? So first of all, if you're talking about like where to network and where to focus, whether you're focused on business or entrepreneurship, these are the areas I would focus on. So who knows what STEM is? Perfect. Like why do I say focus on STEM? If, like, if you guys were my kids, I would say don't focus on anything else. Why? What was that? Yeah, there's a lot of jobs. Not only that, so if you look at the Utah average wage, if you're in a tech job or in a STEM job, the average wage is $60,000. And I'm sure like some programmers probably skew that some, but if you're in a non-tech job, it's $37,000. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's say you're a marketer in the technology space and you're a marketer in, in the non-agricultural space, okay? You're doing the exact same thing, but what's your paycheck gonna be if you're in the non-tech space? You, what? $20,000 Yeah. Does that make sense? If you enjoy marketing, or if you enjoy accounting, or you enjoy entrepreneurship, if you focus here, this is where the money is. You know, what difference does $22,000 a year make for you in your life? Like, what is that? You in the blue shirt that's like, that looks like you're pissed off. <laughs> yes. What is $22,000 a year? What would that do for you? What? Give me an example. First thing that came to your mind. 
Prostitution? I don't know. Hopefully not. <laughs> what? You would invest? Okay, so you'd invest in your future. Who else? Someone's got to be thinking 22000 a year might be a Ferrari payment, right? Yeah, so you could take a really nice vacation every year. A really nice vacation. You could go like, with your kids, your family, by yourself. You could go on several vacations if you're single. That's like 11 vacations a year you could go on for 2000 bucks. Do you get where I'm going at here? So one, you should, oh, you know, to summarize the presentation so far, it's all about making really good assumptions. And as you're focusing on where to focus, I would focus in tech. Okay, some of the things you need to learn also is, is size of company will matter as you choose your profession and like who to network with. Meet with people from different sizes of companies. So for example, I, would, I think you should either be in a startup or like a Google, right? And, the re and I would skip the middle ground, but you need to find this out for yourself. If you're at a large company, you're gonna get paid training, you're gonna have a lot of stability, you could play the whole political game and never really work a day in your life and just show up to the office. If you're at a startup, like where I, where I love, you know, like, like paychecks don't matter, I wanna build something, I wanna change the world, right? I want the ability to control my future. And so for you, I encourage you to network with people from different sizes of companies. The next thing is, as you're networking with people, is I focus on industry, software, hardware, like something like pharmaceutical, right? Focus on, on the STEM, focus on tech. And the other thing is also talk to people in different device places. It's like, I'm gonna go to this one. So like, so like one of the things is like, in Utah there's a ton of events. Every week there's events in any one of these fields. How many of you went to, have gone to a networking event in the last two weeks? Okay, that's like three or four of you. So these guys are gonna be millionaires and the rest of you are gonna make like $40,000 a year. Is that what you guys want? Like what will going to networking events help you out with? Why? You, the guy in the red shirt raised your hand? Did you raise your hand? Yeah, you. Wait, who, someone else raised their hand in this general area? Right, you did. What event did you go to? Okay, why did you go to One Million Cups? Well, for, the class, for the class? Yeah, also, I, there, there was a startup that closed and I'm using that to to Mm-hmm. And when you join them and they sell for a billion dollars on, on the New York Stock Exchange, everyone's going to be like, remember that kid in our class? But it's because you went to a networking event, right? You need to be actively seeking opportunities and networking events, whether you're interested in HR, like these are all startup related events, but every week, if I knew I was going to be in HR, I, and before I graduated, I would go to every single event related to HR, and not only that, I would volunteer at all of those different organizations. And I would be like the most helpful person because then they would hook me up with any job I wanted, right? If I was interested in marketing, there's a ton of marketing events here in Utah. You can go to Meetup, you can find marketing events. There's the boring American Marketing Association I would go to, where people like, you know, marketing directors from Novell go to. And the thing is, is why, like, why interview? Why send a resume to a black box when I can go to an event and find whoever I want and build a relationship with them beforehand? One of the real big secrets are, is I would encourage you, like, if, for example, you're interested in marketing, I would go to the American Marketing Association and the, the secret spot from networking that I found is I like to be the person who sends the emails out because no one wants to do that. Hey guys, there's an event next week. Do you want me to remind everyone on Facebook, on an email, and LinkedIn? Everyone's like, great, because I don't have the time to do that. But then what it does is everyone in the group knows who I am. And it's extremely powerful from a networking perspective. Right? At, you know, right now I'm heads down, but when I was focused on really building my network as a student, everyone knew who I was. Because in every group I participated, I would send out the LinkedIn announcement, I created a Facebook group, I pushed that announcement on Twitter, no one wanted to do that, but everyone's like, John Bradshaw, he's everywhere, he's doing everything. And then opportunities come to you. And people constantly hit me up now because of that. And that's completely different than sitting in a BYU class, listening to some boring guy who shows up late. You see where I'm going? Are you guys gonna change your life? Say yes. yes. Perfect. If you guys like walked out and said there was a marketing event right now or a startup event I'm going to go to, I would applaud you. You guys should start looking them up and leave. How much more time do I have? Uh, you've got three minutes. Three minutes? All right. So one other thing, I'm going to skip the main process, but another thing I would do besides going to network, like you should go to a networking event at least once a week. 
But another thing I'd encourage you to do is as you're finding people at networking events, or you're finding out people on LinkedIn, or places you wanna work, is meet with a new person, not a student, every week and take them to lunch. If you do that, you're gonna now have 50 very much more personal relationships that you can leverage, where you can say, hey, I'm applying for this job, can you help me look at my, at my resume? You know, if I knew I wanted to get a job at Adobe, which I think would be, if you're looking for a job, would be a fantastic place, I would try to find 50 people from Adobe and take a person to lunch every week and they'll be like, and you'll know a ton of people there. Does that make sense? I think I'm gonna like skip the rest of that part, but that's another thing. I'd go to a networking event once a week. I would take an, like an executive to lunch and as a student, everyone wants to help you out. It's like this magic card. Once you graduate, no one cares about you. Like you're just like everyone else, but as a student, people are here to help you. So I would go to lunch once a week with an executive. So what's the whole point of the white knight, right? So we got, who is this? So is RoboCop better off or worse off when he's on a white unicorn? Better. Better, why? Because it's a white unicorn. Yeah, and unicorns make everything better. So if you don't like RoboCop, I've got another example for you. Is Chew here better or worse off in this scenario? Better. better, right? So the point is, is that from a networking perspective, as you go to events, as you have private lunches, you're going to find people who can open doors for you. Does that make sense? For RoboCop, it was this white, this unicorn. For Chewbacca, it was this squirrel chipmunk. And the thing is, is those people can open doors for you, right? You're going to find people who can do work for you. So my example is John Richards. Like I've, John Richards, I found him at BYU. Um, I started like volunteering and helping him out with the Utah Angels because I wanted to be involved in startups and he knew investors, he knew entrepreneurs, he knew programmers, everyone I needed to know, he knew. So I could go find all those people randomly or I could be John's slave and help him out so much that he would open all those connections for me and tell me, who to know, and he gave me credibility. Do you see where that comes in? So like, as you're going to 50 lunches and as you're networking, find people who can like open doors for you. And then your number one goal is to be their asset. So there would be like several nights I would stay up for hours helping John Richards on projects for BYU or the other things he was working on, because at the end of the day, I knew that I'm a big believer in karma and that he'll open doors for you, for, you know, that him or someone else will open doors for you and that ultimately you want to create a big emotional attachment. And another secret is like you want to meet, like get so friendly that you meet these people at their homes, that you know their children. And so as, a, as an overview, this is what I want you to do from here on out. I want you to go to a networking event once a week. Can you guys do that? If you want to be average, don't. Can you meet with like an executive once a week for lunch? Is that too tough? It's tough. But if you do that, do you want to be a millionaire or do you want to be average? So that's your, that's your guys' choice. And with that, I'll leave you. And again, I apologize for being late. Thanks for, for putting up with me.